God. We thank you, 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 we thank you. Holy, 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 holy is he, 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 holy, 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 holy is he. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are so precious, God. You are so amazing. You are so awesome, Lord God. I thank you. I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for love. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for holding me. Thank you for, for preserving me. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping me from danger seen and unseen. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for renewing our minds. Thank you for giving us fresh perspective, Lord God. We thank you for fresh perspective. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. 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 Lord God, we lift up holy hands this morning and we just say thank you, Father God. Thank you for sanctifying us. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for setting us apart. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you. You are a sovereign God. You are a faithful God. You're a just God. My God, we thank you. You are a gracious God and we thank you. We bless your name. We praise you, my God. We love you so much. We adore you, Father. We adore you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. We adore 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 you. We extol you. Holy, 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 holy is he. Thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you, Lord God. We just lift up your name. We lift up your name. We thank you. 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 We knocking. We knocking. You told us to ask, seek, and knock. We're knocking at your door. We long to be in your presence. We long to be in your face. We long to be in your glory. We long to be in your peace. Saturate us in your peace. Visit us today, O oh Lord. Let the Holy Spirit be amongst us. Let him dwell amongst us, Lord God. We thank you. 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 We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. We bless you. 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 We bless you, my God. We bless you. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify you, Lord God. You are so worthy. You are so awesome. You are so mighty. You are our strength. You are our strong tower. You are Lord God. You are him, Lord God. We thank you. 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 We glorify you. We magnify you, Lord God. We lift you up. We thank you. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. You are King of Kings. You you are Prince of Peace, you are Lord of Lords. My God, I thank you. 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 I love you. I bless you. I praise you. I glorify you. I magnify you, Lord God. I lift up your name. I lift your name up on high. I lift your name up on high. I lift your name up on high. You are so amazing, Daddy. You are so amazing, Lord God. There is none like you, Lord God. There is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you, Lord God. My God, I thank you. 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 I thank you, Lord God. I thank you. Thank you for strength. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for love. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for sanctifying me. Thank you for setting me apart. Thank you for deeming that I am worthy. My God, I thank you. 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 
I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I glorify you. I magnify you, Lord God. I lift you up. I thank you. I thank you. You are my fortress. You are my strong tower, my God. I want to just lift up marriages right now. Father God, I thank you. Father God, I bless you. I praise you. I lift up every marriage represented on this devotional today. I thank you, Lord God, whatever the wedge is, whatever the stronghold is, whatever the wicked device is, whatever the attack of the enemy is, we bind it back to the gates of hell from which it came in the name of Jesus. We thank you for kingdom couples and solid marriages, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that right now you are transforming those marriages. Those marriages are changing to godly marriages. It doesn't matter how they started out. It does not matter what it looked like, Lord God. We just thank you that you're all up in those marriages, Father God. We thank you for godly husbands, Lord God who love wives like Christ loves the church. And we thank you for wives who are submitted to their husbands, Lord God, who will not try to lord over their husbands, Lord God. We thank you for couples who are yielded to you in you, in Christ Jesus. For we know, Lord God, that you created marriage and marriage is holy and marriage is spiritual. And we thank you, Lord God, you just getting all up in those marriages. The Holy Spirit is all up in those marriages, Lord God. We thank you. We're not yielded to temptation. We thank you for husbands that are satisfied by their wives' breasts only. We thank you, Lord God. We will not be wise in our own eyes in our marriages. We thank you, Lord God, that we superimpose our I that your idea of marriage over our own, whatever we thought marriage was, whatever we thought marriage could be, whatever we thought, Lord God, we're not laying in state for that anymore. We're going to trust you with our marriages. We're going to lay our marriages before you this morning. We're going to lift up marriages because it's necessary for kingdom. We thank you for sound hold households. We thank you, Father God, they walk in unity. We thank you, Father God, for unity in their finances and unity in rearing and raising their children. We thank you, Father God, that they have a soft and a tender heart towards each other. We thank you, Lord God, that they walk in agreement with each other, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for the powerful force that they are united, Lord God, in Christ Jesus right now, in the name of Jesus. We thank you every stronghold, every debt, everything that's tried to present itself at to marriage in the name of Jesus. It's broken off those marriages. Now it's broken off quickly. Lord God, I thank you. You are mending broken hearts. Those that have been through bad relationships and those that have been through divorce, Lord God, and those of us that are widowed, Lord God, that you're mending broken hearts, Lord God, for you said in your word, it's not good for man to be alone. You created him a suitable helper. I thank you, Lord God, for those that are us that are women, we are recognizing we are suitable helper helpers and those that of us that are men, Father God, we are praying to become godly men, the men that you've created and the women you created us to be so that we can have kingdom relationships. We're not going to leave our marriages according to this world. We are not. We are not. We cancel in the name of Jesus. We cancel this assignment of divorce. We cancel this assignment of same sex marriages. We cancel anything that is not ungodly, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God. And we invoke you, Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you are all up in those homes, that you are all up in those homes, that you are all up in those homes, that your ministering angels are ministering to them right now. In the name of Jesus, we're taking a stance for our families today. We're taking a stance for our marriage. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. We thank you, Lord God, that you are forming godly marriages right now in Jesus name and that we will see the fruit of our lips, Lord God, because we are praying and we are the ones standing in the gap, Lord God, for marriages in Jesus name. We thank you for it, Father God. We thank you for kingdom and godly marriages right now in Jesus name that we the intercessors are in the way of the enemy every demonic presence every looming thing anything that was in the past that happened it ends today no more bad memories right now because we know solid marriages are going to 
help produce solid children. So we thank you that there are no gaps in the kingdom. We thank you. There are no lacks in the lack in the kingdom. We thank you that husband and wives understand that you provide for them, that they do not provide for themselves. We thank you for those of us that are single, that we aspire to have godly and kingdom marriages. Lord God, grow us up in your glory grow us up. Let us not throw tantrums. Let us not be in our own way. Let us not be self-serving. Let us not be self-sacrificing. Let us not, let us not, let us not grow us up in your way. Grow us up, grow us up, grow us up so that you can get the glory out of our marriages in Jesus name. Amen. Lord God, we bless this devotional today. We thank you, Father God, that we are satisfied by the fruit of our lips and we have life speaking a lips. Put a guard over our mouths this morning. Anything that does not align with your word, arrest it, Holy Spirit. Arrest it, Holy Spirit. Any thought that does not line up with your word, arrest it, Holy Spirit. We thank you. You are maturing us today in the things of Christ, that you are growing us up right now in the things of Christ. We threw throwing tantrums. We're through with false expectations, we threw living life any other kind of way than for your glory. Mature us in the things of you, Lord God, so that we can look like you, so that we can sound like you, Lord God, so that we can walk in the fullness of your glory. Let us be anxious for nothing, everything in prayer and supplication, Lord God, so that we don't move at the rate of ourselves, but we move at the speed of you. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for growing us up today, growing us up today, maturing us in the thing of Christ, aligning our lives with yours so that you can get the glory out of our lives. I thank you for spiritual maturity. I thank you for spiritual maturity today, Lord God. I thank you. We're eating on meat today. We're digesting it, Lord God. We're not going to throw any more spiritual tantrums, Lord God. We're not going to demand our own way, Lord God. We're going to yield to you today, Lord God. We're going to yield to the Holy Spirit today. Holy Spirit, we just invite you in. Jesus, we invite you in. We thank you that the angels are encamped around us. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for the mar- mar- Thank you. We thank you for the mercy seat. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you for revelation knowledge. We thank you that the eyes of our understanding and the hope and who you called us to be in Christ Jesus is being revealed to us today, Lord God. Less of us and more of you in our homes, in our parenting, on our job, Lord God. We thank you for another level of spiritual maturity, my God. God, my God, grow, grow us up in the things of you, grow us up in the things of you, grow us up in the things of you, Lord God, let us be mindful of Christ and all things renew our mind, Lord God. I thank you for grace. I thank you for mercy. I thank you for breaking strongholds. I thank you for breaking strongholds. I thank you for breaking strongholds in the name of Jesus. Anything that has had us pinned in place, that has not allowed us to mature in you, to grow forward, to move up, to grow in things of God. We thank you that in the name of Jesus, those cords are being severed. Right. Those cords are being severed and destroyed. Anything that had us bound in place, whether it's shame, whether it's condemnation, Lord God, whether it's past sins, whether it's past mistakes, whether it's thinking rooted in religion, Lord God, anything that has had us bound in place, anything that has had us stuck, anything that has had us snared, anything that has had us entangled, anything that has had us entrenched, anything that has had us wrapped up, any relationship that's had us entered and snangled and snared and wrapped up, Lord God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. You're severing those cords as we study your word this morning, right now, as you speak right now in the name of Jesus, You are destroying yokes because the anointing destroys the yoke and the anointing is present with us here today. So we thank you for your glory. 
We thank you. You're burning up the chaff. We thank you. You're searching the chambers of our heart, Lord God. We thank you for anything that's in our heart that does not line up with your word. You're plucking it out. You're pulling it up right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God. 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 I thank you. 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 Show us your glory, Lord God. Let us manifest your glory, Lord God, so that we could walk into the fullness of who you called us to be in Jesus name. Amen. Remember, it is the anointing that destroys the yokes. It's not you that destroys the yokes. It's the anointing that destroys the yokes. And when we try to destroy the yokes, we will tear and mess things up. But when we allow the anointing to destroy the yoke, then what it does is it burns up it breaks apart, it severs the cord, it pulls away from anything that is resistant because the anointing is Jesus. When we try to do it in our own strength, we'll leave, my God, Holy Spirit, I hear you. We will leave ourselves still attached to some things because we don't have the strength to do that. That can only be done with the blood. That can only be done in righteousness that can only be revealed to you in your word that can only come through the word that can only come in renewing your mind. So you can't afford to do it in your own strength. You can't afford, you have to ask Jesus for help. You have to understand your weak places, your barren places, your dry places, your thirsty places. You have to understand the thirst trap. You have to understand the things that will catch you up and snare you. And the only thing that can sever the cords or break or destroy those things things as Jesus is Jesus It's the blood It's the anointing It's the word of God. So it's not enough for you to mentally ascend something be like, Oh, I'm not doing that no more. No, you need the help of the Holy ghost. You need the help of the Holy ghost. You need a center. You need a center force, a center. I can't even get the word out force that will center you that will settle you into the things of God and into the things of Jesus so that you become balanced in Christ, not balanced in what this world says is balanced, but balanced in the things of Christ. Well, good morning. Welcome. I love y'all. Um, I'm happy to be here this morning. I want to share a word with you. I know it's the day after Thanksgiving. Some of you are probably black Friday shopping. I thank the Lord that I've been delivered. Um, some of you are probably still eating and hanging out with family. I appreciate you being here, but the anointing is going to destroy yokes this morning and we're going to grow up in the things of Christ. I hear him talking about spiritual maturity, even as I am talking to you, growing up in the things of Christ and what that looks like. And that doesn't look like what we think maturity is. I remember being a little girl saying, I can't wait to be grown. And then when I got grown, I was like, Oh, I'm grown. Like you can't tell me nothing. I'm grown, but I really wasn't grown. I was foolish. <laughs> I really wasn't grown. I was foolish. I was so foolish. I was foolish. I was foolish. I was foolish. And so now I'm growing up and I am maturing in the things of Christ. And those, for those of you that are out Black Friday shopping, if you saved and you put money up for this day and it was in your budget, do you. It's nothing wrong with it. It's just you got to have balance in, ev in everything. If it's not in your budget, don't be out there spending your rent money um, thinking you can get it back for with taxes. Don't, don't do that. That's a demonic setup. Um, to have you in a perpetual cycle of brokenness. Don't spend money that you do not have. That's not what faith is about. That's a demonic cycle that will have you in a perpetual state of brokenness when you spend money before the money is in your hand because you don't know if it's going to be delayed. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen, but the enemy will have you in a perpetual cycle of poverty and you will not even uh, realize it. <laughs> we, You have not realized it. Yeah, Tamika, you're right. We should have stayed in a child's place. You should have stayed in a child's place. That's big. Like even in the things of Christ and dealing with the things of God, it's important for us to stay in a child's place, stay in position because you'll grow and you grow and you won't be fractured and you won't grow with cracks in you. 
So let's get in the word today. Remember um, a couple of weeks ago, we started talking about being living a spiritual life and that we are spiritual beings. I mean, I feel like we in church and I need to tell you to look at your neighbor and say, you need to grow up <laughs> and you are a spiritual being like you need to grow up and you are a spiritual being. And so we've been studying a variety of scriptures about the spiritual life. We started with John 6, 63. We started with Romans 8, 6. We started with Romans 8, 9. Let me pause and say something. I'm saying this about Black Friday because I used to have that issue. I used to take money. I'm, I don't like to testify about something I ain't overcame. I used to take money that was due for something else. And I would go and do all these, black, this thing on Black Friday because I was thought I was doing all these savings and I would push bills out. I would push, push bills out. Like I would push bills out and I would do this on a consistent basis. I was creating a cycle and in a cycle of poverty and not even realizing it. And also in a cycle that wasn't faith. And I thought, well, it's the sales and I'll never catch these sales again. And as I became more mature in the things of the Lord, I began to watch that I would be able to get those same sales after Black Friday. And sometimes there will be a better discount. So I, I want to be cautious because people think you picking are purposeful on them. And what I'm really saying to you is I failed at this. And I, I want to share this with you so you don't fail at this. So if you don't have it, you don't have it, right? You don't, you don't, you don't have it. You don't have it. And the enemy will have us focused on things thinking, oh, I'm doing this for everybody else, but we're so out the will of God. So today just, we're going to focus on spiritual maturity and growing, growing up, <laughs> growing up. And so that's a personal testimony. And how I had to mature and realize God's kingdom finances look different. So we've been kind of needed to pause there because sometimes people will go different places with it. And it's not focused. It's a revelation that I wanted to share. So we started with John 6, 6, 3. It is the spirit who gives life. The first flesh prophets, nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and our life. And then we went to Romans 8, 6. For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Then we went over to Romans 8 and 9. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. And the next thing is for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. And that's what we're focusing in on today. For the law, there's a legal side to a spiritual life. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law and sin of sin and death. And we're going to meditate on that this morning. And I want to show you something God showed me this morning about my prayer life and what it used to look like when I was praying from a very um, self-centered place, when I was praying from a place that did not look in line up with a spiritual life, um, there is a contrast between the life in the spirit and life in the flesh, right? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Well, if my words still align with it, then I'm not free from the law of sin and death. So if my words still sound like it, I'm not free. When my words no longer sound like it, then I'm free. And I thought, cause I was going to church and cause I could quote scripture and because, um, um, I could do different things that it sounded free, but God could still hear the meditations of my heart. <laughs> God could still hear the meditations of my heart. God could still hear the things in my life, the thoughts that did not align with his word. He could hear my prayers that were still self-centered, that were very selfish. He could hear what I was saying. So for what the law could not do in in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but who walk according to the spirit, right? So the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. I'm free, right? 
I am free from the law of sin and death. Can you say that? I am free from the law of sin and death, right? I'm free from that. That was a strong and an absolute law, had no room for grace, had no room for mercy, had no room for love, right? So it, it, I'm free from that. When Jesus came, it freed me from that, right? Every sin we commit and every cemetery we see proves it. Every time we see it, it proves it. But the law of spirit, the spirit of life in Christ is stronger. And the law of the spirit frees us from the law of sin and death. So if we are free from the law of sin, right? Then we do not have to sin because we are free from sin's dominion. That's why we have to learn how to renew our mind from being in such a sinful mind state to being more right, righteous, conscious, right? Sin does. And you have to say that to yourself. Sin has no power over me. Sin has no power over me. If you're not going to confess anything else, you need to be saying sin has no power over me. Like sin, I am free from sin's dominion. That was the whole point of Christ so that I could be free from sin's dominion, right? And I can't do this in the flesh for what the law could not do. It was weak through the flesh. So the law can do many things. It can guide us, teach us, and tell us about God's character, right? It's good. The law was cool. It could teach us about God, God's character. But what the law could not do was give energy to our flesh. It gave us a standard. The law gives you a standard, right? But it can't give you the power to please God. The power to please God comes from the spirit and allowing God's spirit to, to be in us. Right. And so we have to realize this. Right. We're, we're, we have to realize this. Um, it it was weak in that it was weak from the flesh. So the law is weak because it speaks to our flesh and it comes to fleshly men and it speaks to them as fleshly men. But the work of the spirit is what transforms us by the crucifixion of the old man. And it imparts and it gives us wisdom for the new man. Your spiritual life is higher than your flesh life. Your spiritual life is higher than, than your flesh life, right? That's why when we go over to John 15, Christ is saying to them, look, I need you to understand. And you got, really need to go back and read John 14 as well and see all he was saying before that. Because in 14, he's telling you Jesus is the only way. And then in 15, he's saying, look, I'm the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. And he prunes that branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more fruit. You have already been pruned and purified by this message. I've given you remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I'm the vine. You're the branches. Those who reign, remain in me and I am them will produce much fruit. Jesus was saying, I'm bigger and higher and greater than this law. And so you have to remain in me so that you can receive the spiritual things, right? So that you can understand the spiritual things. The law kept you legalistic and not guided, right? by the spirit. So Jesus had to come so that we could become free from the law. So I need to show you something because, um, as I was meditating on this, this morning and asking the Lord to reveal this to me in my prayers, I was praying this morning and I have been very intentional to pray God's way and ask him what a life in my prayer look life looks like, um, so that I can be in total alignment with his will. And so let me, this little mirror right here, it says how, ooh, mm, this little mirror right here says how I see myself or how I pray. And when I still live a life in the flesh or when I see myself is fragmented, <laughs> when I see myself or how I really see myself or the things that I say to myself or how I'm praying to myself and I'm still praying and I'm still talking and I'm still living in a life of the flesh. It looks as if I'm praying to the father. Come on, Holy Spirit. It looks as if I'm praying to the father. It looks as if I'm praying God's will. It looks as if the things that I'm seeing and saying are according to God's will. And so in, um, 
in any area in my life still now, or if anything has happened in my life, how I really see myself has a lot to do with the things that I'm saying out my mouth. It has a lot to do with the words that are producing life in me. And so how I really see myself is, is incorporated in my prayers is incorporated in my languages. Remember we've learned that our words, right? That the power of our tongues are life and death. Well, that's a spiritual thing. If I haven't received by the spirit that the power of my tongue is life and death and I don't understand it, then the things that I say, how I really see myself is going to come out in my prayer life. It's going to come up out in how I talk and it's going to say, and so before my life became centered on Christ and I began to pursue the spiritual things of God, not religious order, not religion, then this is what my time in the mirror or how I used to say things. I'm just going to be honest with you. Can I show you this? Can I give you revelation through this? And so as I'm looking in the mirror, my confidence and how I talk to myself and how I reference and how I pray is consumed in this mirror. And Jess wrote a very powerful devotion about mirror, mirror. What do you see? Right. And so my prayer life used to look like, you know, Lord, thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. And then I will be very consumed and start talking to him about myself and things of myself. And I remember when I was first praying for a husband, I was like, Lord, I need him six foot one, six foot two. I want him to be corporate. I want him to be bald headed. I want him to look good. I want us to be this power couple. That's what I want him to look like. And, um, thank you Lord for this day. And thank you for what you've graced me with. And I'm going to stun on them today. And when I get dressed, oh my gosh, I look good. And they going to see your glory in me and they going to see what it looked like. And as I was in this mirror, I started my five point plan for success. And I'm going to be this successful lawyer. At one time I wanted to be a lawyer and I'm going to do business business and I'm going to be high powered and I'm going to be a high attorney and I'm just going to go do all of these things. And thank you for my children, Lord God. And uh, um, they're going to be successful. And my kids are going to show people how uh, children who go to church and who love God, what they really look like in your life. And thank you for positioning me and thank you for me and I need you to do this for me and I need you to open up the doors for me and I need you to provide more income for me Lord God so that I can show them that I'm really not who they thought I was Lord God I need you to do that I'm about to stun on them for you God I'm about to increase my capacity Lord as a matter of fact enlarge my territory Lord God so I can build a better home so I can build a bigger home Lord God so I can be on pat platforms so the things that they said about me, they realized that they wasn't true, right, God? And Lord God, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a serve and I'm a give and I'm a do a little bit and I'm a do a little bit here. And, and I was praying prayers that were very selfish. And every time I would talk to myself in the mirror, I thought I was building a self-esteem in Christ. And really I was building a self-esteem in myself, right? I had a five point plan. I had, ain't nothing wrong with goal building. I teach people to build goals all the time, get build goals. I thought I had a five point plan, right? And I was so consumed in myself and I was still consumed in about what other people thought about me and all oh, they were looking at me and they don't know who I am and they don't know that I'm a child of God. All of these things I was still building up in my work while, while going to church, while serving, while doing all the things that I possibly needed to do. This is really how I was seeing myself. And this is really how I was talking to God. Like this is really how I was talking to God. This is really how my flesh was moving. This is really what my flesh was saying. It was my prayers and things were very centered on myself. My language was very centered on myself. And it was because my life in the spirit was really a life in the flesh. A life in the flesh will teach you how to build without God. A life in the flesh, I, I boast, I'm boasting on my kids' grades, right? I'm boasting, I got my kids involved in 2,000 things only so I can tell people how smart they are. Even, even though I don't know that they're dealing and struggling with pornography and some other things that I haven't seen, like just some things that I haven't seen. And so as I was looking at this and I was seeing this and I'm like, this is how I used to pray. This is how I used to pray. I used to pray very selfish. 
I used to pray very self-centered. I used to talk to God a lot about me, about my desires, about my, my wants and about my needs. I was praying from a place in which he could not get no victory. I, I, I was, I'm talking about my, you know, and all my kids have degrees and all my kids are well accomplished and all my kids have gone to school and all my kids are proficient in this still talking about me, still centered on me, but glory to God, glory, glory to God, glory to God. And this was really how I saw myself. And I saw myself. I saw myself. I saw myself. I saw myself. This is who and what I was seeing. I was seeing myself. I was talking about myself. I was centered on myself. I did not understand that the way I saw myself was really from a flesh perspective. There was nothing spiritual leading into me. I was not planted. And anytime my five point plan didn't work or anytime whatever I was saying in this mirror didn't work, I would start feeling like I was unsuccessful. I would start feeling like I was not successful. I was feeling like God did had forgot about me or I was feeling like God didn't love me or I was feeling like the plans and I'm talking about I'm in church and I'm serving in church and I'm doing absolutely everything that I think is successful and I'm still very selfish and centered on me. A life in the flesh will have you very legalistic. It teaches you to network. It teaches you to put yourself in the front in every relationship and oh Lord, when we pray, make my husband a better husband and make my kids better kids and make them see me for what they see me, right? Right. Well, and it's because this that that's because it, that's because you, we ain't got no revelation. Right. Of who we are in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter. It's the same. It's all the same thing. Even if you get in this. Can I tell you something? I started one way and became another way and became critical because I still had no revelation for myself. And I went to the other extreme of criticizing myself because I thought that was humility. And that's not humility either. That's a false sense of humility. And so when I don't like what I see in the mirror is because I have no revelation. My words are empty. I have no revelation of who I am in Christ Jesus. I'm either going to be two extremes. I'm going to be full of myself or I'm going to hate myself. All, both of them are the same. Bo both of them are the same. Whether I'm full of myself or whether I hate myself, both of them are still the same. Both of them are a life without life. I've been to both extremes. I've been where I thought I was more worthy than I should be to a position where I didn't even want to look at myself and I didn't even understand how beautiful I was in Christ. In Christ, I didn't understand. And so both are outside in the flesh and outside the spirit. Both of them are how I really see myself, whether I'm puffed up, whether I'm bragging on myself, whether I'm bragging on my kids, whether I'm bragging on what I have, whether I'm bragging on where I'm going. Both of them are full of myself. Both of them are full of myself. Both of them are outside the spirit. And so if I'm full of the spiritual things of God, this is not because can I show you something? It's fractured. It's either way. It's fractured. Either way. It's a life in the flesh. It's fractured. It's going to be broken. <laughs> it's, it's, it's broken. It's a broken system. It's a broken mentality. It's fall, It's falling apart. <laughs> either way. It's fractured. Either way, it's skewed. Either way, it does not line up with what God has said about me. Either either way, it is not it is not dressed in the spirit of truth. Whether I'm full of myself or whether or not I'm full, I'm I'm condemning and whatever, it's still a life outside the spirit because a life in the spirit, according to what we're learning in A2, says, you know what? I'm free from all sin. I'm free from death. I'm free from all those things that I believed. I'm free from this life, but it's fractured. <laughs> it's fractured. It's broken. It's fra It's fractured. And if, if I've realized that it's fractured and the only way that I'm going to realize it's fractured is that I understand who I am in Christ Jesus. And I understand what the word says about me, but it looks this way. It looks real built up. See, I can't see your frat. You can't, I can't see fractures, right? And most of us don't even notice fractures. Most of us will still be talking to 
ourselves in a broken, fractured state. We don't see the fractures. We're just trying to see between the cracks or we've learned to adapt. Come on, Holy Spirit. I don't know where this came from or who this is, or we've learned to adapt to the cracks, right? But when you turn this way, where the word will reveal to us how fractured we are. Well, how fractured we are. And so if we have in a heart, if we still self glorified in the mirror, or if we still critical in the mirror, we have no revelation of who we are in Christ. And we are not living a life in the spirit. We're living a life in spirit. Now, it does take time. It does take time. It does take time. But it 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 it, it has to be replaced. So let me show you something. So this how I should see myself, right? How I really should see myself, how I really look at myself is changed. But I need to read something to you. I need to share something with you. So I was, as I was praying this, the Lord took me to the definition of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. <laughs> and I was like, ADHD? The Holy Spirit said, go look up the definition. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is a mental disorder, right? There is a mental disorder of the neural development type. It is characterized by difficulty to pay attention. It is characterized by excessive activity. It is characterized by acting without regards to consequences, consequences, which are otherwise not appropriate for a person's age. I love God. Individuals with ADHD can also display problems with regulating emotions. I, I'm just, just read it. The symptoms appear before a person is 12 years old and presents for more than six months and causes problems in at least two settings, school, home, or recreational activities. In children, problems paying attention may result in school performance. Additionally, there is an association with other mental disorders and substance misuse. All it, although it causes impairment, particularly in modern society, many people with ADHD can have sustained attention for tasks they find interesting or rewarding, knowing that it's hyper focused, right? Despite being the most commonly studied and diagnosed mental disorder in children and adolescents, the exact cause is unknown in the majority of cases. Genetic factors are est estimated to make up about 75 cents of the risk. Nicotine use, exposure during pregnancy, it does not be, it does not appear to be related to the style of parenting or discipline. It affects about five to seven percent children, and then it gives you ADHD. When I started reading this, I'm like, it is characterized by difficulty paying attention, excessive activity, and acting without regards to consequences, which are otherwise not appropriate for a person's age. This is us. <laughs> this is how we've been. These are the things that we are being experienced. We are suffering from spiritual A D H D. We are, we are, and the world has created systems for us to be focused on death and things that are not of the spirit. And those things keep our attention and they are like sugar in our system. They hype us up for a minute. They bring us up. They make us think highly of ourselves. They pull us into such a spiritual place, making we think we've arrived at a certain place or either they leave us really low in depression, especially if we're taking other medications. I'm not talking about well, you got to hear this spiritually. I'm like, God, this is huge. And he's like, yeah, this has been the problem. You guys are not having difficulty paying attention, involved in excessive activity, acting without regards to consequences because you don't understand who you are as a spiritual being. And if you don't fill yourself up with the word, if you don't renew your mind in the word, if you don't understand what God is saying, has already said about you in the word, then the new image of yourself will not be formed and you will still be in a position or a place when you seek and look for other things or you can't pay attention or you can't stay still or you can't look at yourself in the mirror or you're still praying selfish prayers. So about a year and a half ago, God had me start taking post-it notes and putting post-it notes on my mirror, right? And every time a scripture would speak into my spirit, I would put the post-it note on the mirror. I really didn't understand what God was teaching me and what God was telling me, right? 
But the other day I put like my last post-it note in place. I could not see myself in the mirror. And God said to me, that's what a life in Christ looks like hidden in me. That's what a life in Christ looks like hidden in me. You don't see yourself at all. But because we suffer from spiritual ADHD, I'm just being honest. Go back and read that definition. We miss, we miss the things of God because we have a difficulty paying attention. Uh, we have excessive activity. We act without regards to consequences and are other, and it's otherwise not appropriate for our age. And I was like, my God, I understand why we've got to get and understand what a life in the spirit looks like. So this is how the Lord began to show me how to pray and my prayers change. Right. And I, I begin to take, instead of being up in the morning, praying and talking about myself, I begin to, my prayers begin to transform. Right. And the more I saturated myself in the word, I, the, the more my prayers begin to transform, right? And it began to raise up a depth in me. And I begin to realize that the way of a man seems right, but it's not right. And so instead of praying my five point plan, instead of saying, oh, I have a plan and God, I need you to obey to my plan. I just started praying, Lord, let my life be used for your glory. Like, and really plan it. Cause he knows if I'm serious in my heart. And the more I began to pray, let your life, let my life be used for your glory. The more he began to center me on the things of him. And so the scriptures, I begin to pray the things I begin to say, I didn't even start in the mirror. I wasn't even talking about myself anymore. I wasn't even saying what I needed to say about myself anymore. I began to pray the word a lot. I didn't need a self-esteem booster. I didn't have to be like, girl, you look good. Even though I understand that I look good. The things that I began to say were Galatians 6 and 14. As for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord. As for me, may I never boast about anything for, except for the Lord of our, for the, for our Lord Christ. Isaiah 10 and 27. It's not Lakeisha that's destroying the yokes. It's not Lakeisha that's making impact. It's not Lakeisha that's changing lives. It's the anointing that destroys the, the yokes. Proverbs 29 and 11. Fools vent their anger, Lakeisha, but the wise hold it back. Then charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Proverbs Proverbs 31 30. This exterior thing will fade away. Beauty will fade away. Charm is deceptive. Beauty is all this will fade away, Lakeisha. But a woman who fears the Lord needs to be prayed. And then Romans 1 15 17. The Lord, word of the Lord is in my mouth. Acts 2 16. And then when I begin to pray for a husband, I said, Lord, give me somebody who loves, can love me like Christ loved the church. Let him be saved. Let him be sanctified. Let him be filled with the Holy Ghost, Lord God. Let them be able to love my children. Let them be able to lead us in the things of Christ. When I begin to pray for my children, I started saying, Lord, let them be raised for your glory. Let us, let me not be caught up into the things of this world, Lord God, but let me be consumed. Let me not be focused on whether or not they the best basketball player or the best artist. And these are just the gifts and talents you've lended to them. Let them be men of God, Lord God, let them be men of God. Let them be able to lead their households, Lord God. And when I begin to pray about my purpose, Lord God, let me be led into your purpose. Let me be led to, to your glory. Let me, that it just changed. Even this morning, show me who you need me to impact today. Show me whose lives you want me to touch today, Lord God. And it left me in a different position in a different place. And it left me to be able to be obedient to God instead of being able to be resistant to the things of God. And so every day I pray less about myself and more about the will and God. And it took time and it was a process, but I had to realize that this was deceiving me. Like this was deceiving me. Things I had been taught were deceiving me. These were not things according to the spirit, right? These were not the law of spirit of life in Christ. Jesus sets me free from all of the world's expectations and all of my expectations and all of my low self-esteem and all of the, the word, the spirit frees me from that because this right here has me caught up and focused on things that will not produce life and our sin and death. That that's just the truth. 
That's just the reality. That's where it leads me. That's where I'll be consumed. That's where I'll be. Up. But the more word I begin to get in me, the more I begin to realize how much he loved me. Galatians 5 and 25 says, if we live by the spirit, let us also walk by the spirit. This is walking by the spirit, walking in what the word says. And I'm like, Lord, that's the problem. We got ADHD. We got spiritual ADHD. We have difficulty paying attention. We have excessive activity. We act without regards to consequences. And we are, uh, we are not acting according to our age and spiritual maturity because there's not enough word in us. We're not praying the things that you would love to say for us to pray. We're not in position because we're very self-centered. We're very consumed in us and the enemy will disguise it in two ways. You're going to be over full of yourself, right? Or you're going to walk in a full false sense of humility where you're going to be extra critical of yourself. Even when you being extra critical of yourself, you're still centered on yourself. Even when you say this, you still self-centered, you still centered on yourself. But when I position myself, even when I don't feel like it to say what the word says about me, right? When I understand and spend time in the word and I'm getting my mind renewed and I'm beginning to say, no, I'm going to resist the devil. I'm only going to think on things that are pure, lovely and of good report. It'll change my position. It changes my words. It changes what I say. It changes how I think. And then I become a life in a life that's pleasing to God. Remember, there's a way that the man thinks is right, right? We think it's right. And it's like, nope, it's not right. Well, I hope you understood that. I hope that helps somebody today to see how, and I'm talking about, I'm praying these things with boldness and I'm declaring things that you going to give me my favor, trying to bend God to my will, trusting, not trusting in the Lord, leaned to my own understanding in my own ways, really acknowledging myself, but pretending like I was acknowledging God when what I needed to really be saying about myself was centered when in the word. If you only say what the word says about you, it'll begin to transform and change your life. If you only pray, God has already get, give you a model for prayer. If you pray his will for your life, it will begin to transform your life. If you seek the kingdom first, I need to see myself. I need fresh perspective. I need spiritual maturity. I can't be ADHD. I can't, I don't need medicine. I don't need other things. I need more of your word so that I can center myself in your word and grow up in the things of Christ. <laughs> like grow up in the things of Christ. It's not my plan, Lakeisha. It's not my plan. It's your plan, Lord. It's the things that you're trying to bring me into in maturity, right? And then I'm only praying and saying about myself what the word says, right? That's the best self-esteem booster. I'm only praying to myself and about myself what the word says. I'm only praying about my marriage. I'm only praying about my children. I'm only praying the things that the word of God says, and then that becomes the standard. And then guess what? Then I begin to be transformed into his image. And then every time I look into this mirror, all I see is the word. All I see is the word. All I will begin to see is the word. And it's a self-control thing. You've got to do it yourself, but you've got to understand I'm a spiritual being, right? Um, the law of the spirit of life, Christ Jesus has set me free from this life. I don't have to live this life. I don't care who's told me that. I don't care who said that this life is important, that this life meant something. I don't care who condemned me. I don't care. I'm not going to be selfish. I'm not going to live this way. I can't afford to because it's fractured. It's broken and it's falling apart versus I'm going to say and look at this from the perspective that I'm a spiritual life. And if Jesus Christ has set me free from the law of sin and death, then God, I need to see you the way I, you see me. And the way, the only way I'm going to do this is through my spiritual life and through the word, not through religion, not through all of these other things. I hope that helps somebody today. Um, I'm really good. I really had to meditate on that. And I was like, Lord, this is the correct way to pray. So this morning I was like, how can I serve you? 
Like it's transformed me. Like give me a building for people. We need a building y'all. Right. But we need a building for not for Lakeisha and not to say this is where LMJ ministries is. We need a building to be able to serve people. I need a van to be able to serve people. You're going to take care of me, position me so that I can be, send me someone across your path, expand my opportunity. That's how I've changed. That's how I've changed. But I didn't, I'm just telling you, I used to pray like that. I used to pray very selfish. I used to want to stun on them so people can see how good you were but it was really still about me so let me pray father god that your eyes and your understanding be open and lightened into who you are called to be in christ jesus and that you recognize yourself in the word and that you see yourself in the word and that you no longer um struggle um with seeing yourself in the word that you begin to understand that I am a spirit and the life, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from any sin. It set me free from death. It set me free from this world standards. It set me free from, I can live a life in Christ fully and experience everything that God wants me to experience in Christ Jesus. And I am praying that's your revelation. And if you're somebody who's not received Christ as Lord and savior today, then I'm praying that you make the decision that the life in sin, this bound thing leaves me fractured, <laughs> leaves me cracked, leaves me without clear perspective. It does not glorify God. It only glorifies myself. Even when I'm in low self-esteem, I'm not glorifying God. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. So what are the strongholds? How do I break the strongholds? Help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit, so that I can walk into the fullness of who you called me to be and I can live a life and live a life more abundantly. All you got to do is ask the Lord to forgive you for your sins. All you got to do is get into the death. Open my eye, the eyes of my understanding, Lord God. Show me this in your spirit. Show me this in your spirit. I want to live fully and wholly in you. In Jesus name. Amen. I love y'all. Meditate on that this weekend. That's strong. I know it's heavy. I know it's heavy. I know it's big. I know it's deep. I know it's heavy. But remember, we're growing up. And when we grow up, it ain't milk. It's meat. And we have to chew on that. And we have to digest that. And we have to focus. And we have to look at and ask the Holy Spirit, what in my life? Right? Am I still tied to sin? Am I still tied to death? Right? Am I still tied to where in my life am I tied to those things? Because, Lord, I want to mature in the things of you so that I can be effective for kingdom. If you sit down today, get off the devotional. Don't go anywhere else on Facebook. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray and just say, Lord, reveal to me my immature places. Reveal to me the things in my life that still look like you so that I can walk in the fullness of who you call me to be. I promise you he'll start revealing He'll start showing you. He'll start saying to you, put more word in this area, put more word in this area, confess more word. And then the image of Christ will be formed in you and out you and the glory of the Lord will be upon your life. I'll see y'all back here. We'll be back Monday, 5 a.m. Be praying in the spirit that the Lord give us fresh revelation, fresh word, fresh manna so that we can grow in the things of Christ. We got four weeks left. We need to finish strong. We got four weeks in the year. Your year ain't over. Your year is not over. You got four weeks yet left. We need to finish strong. We got to ask the Holy Spirit, what have I been saying about myself that does not line up with the word? What have I been praying over my family that does not line up in the word? What are the things that I've been doing that do not line up with your word that, are, that have been operating? Where am I suffering from ADHD? <laughs> My, where am I suffering that I'm not, I'm having difficult paying attention to you. I'm in excessive activity. I'm acting without regard for the consequences that'll come to my action. Show me this Lord so that I can walk in the fullness of you. And he will. Sometimes we need the weight on us. Sometimes we need the weight on our, of the 